Well, hello scrappers, Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm sorting some IC chips so that I can uh, run them through my various processes for getting the gold and silver out of them. And uh, these chips I'm sorting right here came from Stan. He sent me a box a while back and I have a video about unpacking that box. In fact, a couple videos came out of that box because Stan sent me some really nice, fully gold-plated, old vintage chips and some people were saying, oh, you shouldn't you shouldn't render them down for gold. You should put them up for sale. Well, Stan is a computer repairman, and he told me those chips are all bad. And I've tested a few of them, and they are bad. So um, we're a little bit afraid that if I do sell them as is, they're going to wind up on the used chip market as good chips. And then people will be disappointed when they find out they're bad chips. So I'm not going to resell them. I'm just going to render them down for their gold and silver, as the original plan was, as Stan sent them for me to do. So um, I'm sorting them right now because uh, he sent me several bags of these uh, dual inline package chips. And, um, you know, there's a, they're a mix of ceramic and plastic. And uh, I actually found another one down here with fully gold-plated legs that was mixed in with these. So I set it aside, and I got ceramics over here and plastics over here and uh, they just go through my processes different ways so I'll put the one with the gold plated legs over here with the rest of them that have gold plated legs all the ceramics together all the plastics together and all of this other stuff that isn't IC chips these are like power, voltage regulators and power transistors I'll put them all together and process them separately so um, this is not going to be exclusively the stuff I got from Stan um, I'm just going to sort this stuff out and put it with my uh, my general IC chip processing. And uh, we'll process some of it and uh, see how much gold we get. So I'm going to finish sorting through these. There's still a few ceramics hiding out in here. So I'll sort through them, get them all classified, and then we will move on to processing them. So processing the plastic ones takes a fair amount of time because I'm going to um, dissolve the legs off in AP solution just to reduce the amount of junk metal I have to deal with. But uh, the ceramics, I don't run them through that process, so we may just process them right away here in this video and see how much gold we can get out of those. But first, I gotta finish sorting, so let me do that. Okay, I finished sorting. I've got two bags of plastic IC chips up there that we're gonna run through my delegging process here in a little bit. I've got this bag right here is full of the fully gold-plated stuff that Stan sent me. And I've got some chips here I've sorted out that have gold-plated legs and or other gold plating on them. So I'm just going to add them into here and set that aside. This will be a special project for one day. We'll, we'll process my accumulated collection of fully gold-plated chips. And now again, these chips are bad. Okay. A lot of people telling me you need to sell them. Well, a lot of these chips in here are very rare. Uh, very expensive if you can find them on the used market or as new old stock. And um, I'm afraid some unscrupulous people may try to resell them as good, even though they're bad. So we're not going to do that. I've done some further sorting. Out of my bin of ceramic chips here, I pulled out all of the EEPROM chips, or window chips as they're commonly called. And I sorted them into two piles. These don't appear to have any gold inside them that I can see. Neither gold bond wires nor gold brazing. These over here do have either gold bond wires or gold brazing. So they're going to go back in here. And a lot of these chips in here, even though they aren't EEPROM or window chips, many of them are very, very old. So I, I would not be at all surprised if they contain gold bond wires and gold brazing. So this is the stuff we're going to process first. This, I don't bother trying to take the legs off of these, so we will process these first. Uh, the plastic chips are going to take quite a while, and these, like I said, are going to be a project for another day. So let's get started. All right, before we get started processing the ceramic chips, I thought I'd give you a look at the fate of the plastic chips over here. Uh, they're going to go through my delegging system. So these are my chip delegging buckets. They have muriatic acid in them, and they have bubblers to provide air and the air keeps the liquid circulating and it also adds oxygen to the process which helps attack the copper and dissolve the copper that's in the legs. 
also dissolve the tin, iron, steel, whatever the legs are made of. Now, I don't know if these are ready because they haven't been in here very long. These may have to uh, soak in here a little while longer. We'll take a look. Yeah, I would say the legs are not completely gone yet on those, so those plastic chips are going to have to wait a while for their turn to go into the delegging process. We'll just let these sit in here and soak for a little while longer. Then we'll put those plastic chips in. So let's get started on the ceramic chips and process them. All right, it's time to start processing these ceramic IC chips over here that I've separated out from the others. Um, we're going to be using my Mighty Mill again for this. Now, those of you who have watched my channel in the past, you've seen the Mighty Mill before. It's been a while since it's been the star of the show out here. Uh, if you're new to the channel, well, the Mighty Mill is basically an um, ore crusher, a portable ore crusher for sampling ore at, like, gold mines and stuff. And I love this thing. I've actually used it in the field for sampling ore at gold mines. And we'll probably see it in that role again in the future. Plus, I have some more samples here I need to crush up. So we may have a video in the not-too-distant future of me doing it here. Um, so I need to crush them up and test them for the presence of gold. But this, this is great for all kinds of e-waste. I've crushed all kinds of e-waste in this. I've done all kinds of connectors to get the gold pins out of them. Um, just I've got a whole series of videos on it. I'll put a link in the upper right to one of those videos where I was using this for e-waste. But what we're going to use it for today is we're going to crush up the ceramic IC chips in it. And I've got a few other things here. I've got um, my mining magnet to pick the steel legs out once uh, they come out. Um, I've got a gold pan here and a, uh, a screen. That's 10 holes to the inch screen. Anything that won't go to the screen... Anything that won't go through the screen, we're going to put back in the Mighty Mill for further running. I want everything to go through the screen. And uh, like I said, I'll use the mining magnet. I'll pull the legs out off the screen because they're just steel. And then we will treat the stuff that goes through the screen into the gold pan. I'm going to wear a dust mask while I do this because the Mighty Mill is going to make a lot of ceramic dust while this is going on. So I don't want to be breathing that. So let me get masked up, and we'll run some chips through here. All right, let's see if I can do this without blocking your view too badly. We'll get some chips in here. Well, there's a long 40-pin chip. We'll throw that in. Here's 24-pin chip. Won't overload it. We'll put in a few of these small chips, too. Put the lid on and smash them up. This thing has... Um, some rotating hammers in here. It's driven by a battery-powered angle grinder, and those hammers just rotate at insanely fast speed. They're made of hardened steel, and they will pulverize anything you put in here into a fine dust. Like that. Look at the dust coming out. Yep. All right. So let's dump this out into the screen and see what we got. So here's the results of our first run. You can see the steel legs there on the screen. I can pull as many of those out as I can here. Some of them are getting caught up in the screen. But that's just steel. Get rid of that over there. And then we'll put this stuff through again because I don't know if it'll show up. I'll try to get a close-up with, with my phone, but some of these pieces in here, I can see some of the gold brazing on them still. So this needs to be chopped up a little finer to go through the screen. Yeah, there's one with gold brazing. There's one over there. There's one over here. But what we're getting down here is a pretty fine powder. Now, I'm sure some of the steel came through. Yeah, some of the steel came through, so I'll get rid of that too. And then once I've got all these chips through, we will process the powder and uh, see if we can dissolve the gold out of it with a little aqua regia. But uh, let's put this stuff 
in the in the screen here that didn't go through. We'll put it back in the mighty mill. We'll throw a couple more IC chips in there. Look at that one. That one's partly busted. See the gold on that? Now the purpose of my doing it this way, and I know there's lots of different ways to process IC chips, these, these ceramic ones. The purpose of my doing it this way is mainly I want to separate the steel legs from the ceramic with the gold brazing and the gold bond wires, if there's any gold bond wires. Those gold bond wires will go right through this coarse screen and they'll be mixed in with the stuff down here in the gold pan. So basically what I want is all our gold to be down in the gold pan and our steel legs to be up here. So this, this allows me to separate it pretty easy. If you're interested in a Mighty Mill, I'll put a link to the eBay seller who makes and sells these. It's the only place you can get this is through him. I don't make any money on that link. I just love my Mighty Mill. It's one of the best investments I've ever made. Like I said, I use it here, crushing up e-waste. I use it out in the field, crushing up gold ore. Never failed me. It works great. All right. So once again, I get the steel legs out of here, as many of them as I can. That off to the side. Oversized stuff. Back in here. Oh, I was going to get you a close-up and show you the gold on this stuff, wasn't I? Let me do that. See, there's some pieces there with gold on them. Piece there with some gold on it. Where's the other one? There's there's a piece with some gold on it. And I saw another one down in there. And I don't know if it's showing up, but there's yeah, there it is. Another piece with gold on it. And a lot of these have gold on them. They're just, you know, not on the side facing you generally. So Yeah, there's a big chunk of the brazing on that chunk of ceramic right there. So yeah, all this stuff needs to be continued. All this stuff needs to go back through the mighty mill until it's small enough to go through this screen. So I'm just going to keep this up until I get all the chips processed and all the oversized stuff goes through this screen. It won't take too long. If I'm just over here working and not jawboning, it goes a lot quicker. So let me get to work. And we'll be back when I'm done. And I'll show you what we've got to deal with here. All right, this stuff is ground up small enough to suit me. Now, I have pulled a lot of bits of steel out of there with my magnet over here. Now, I know I haven't got it all. The, those are the legs, all right, off of the IC chips. And this is why I separated the fully gold-plated ones from these. The fully gold-plated ones, we got to process the legs, too. But these are just steel. There's nothing any good there, all right? It's just steel. Now, I got the big pieces of legs out of here, but unfortunately, there's a lot of fine steel in here, too. See that? So... The Mighty Mill, I'm sure, has knocked a lot of little bits of steel off of those legs, and they're wound up down here in the powder down here. So, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get it all out with my mining magnet. I mean, I can, I can do this all day, and I still come up with more steel on the end of the magnet. But more worryingly, those legs were tin to make it easy to solder the IC chips into a PC board. So we probably knocked a lot of tin in here too, as well as some steel. So we're not gonna take this stuff directly to Aqua Regia, no. We're gonna give it some acid treatments to try and dissolve uh, the base metals out of this, the iron, the tin, anything else 
that might be, you know, hanging out in here that we don't want to pollute our aqua regia with, and ultimately our gold when we precipitate it back out of the aqua regia. So, next step for this stuff is to get it into a big beaker, get it into the fume hood, and we'll give it some acid treatments. All right. So, I put the powder from the gold pan into my biggest, widest beaker here so that it's a it's a thin layer on the bottom of the beaker so that that will allow the uh, the chemicals we're going to use the best chance to get in contact with it. If it was a thick layer, we'd have problems, but it's a nice thin layer. Uh, boy, the Mighty Mill did a good job of pulverizing those IC chips into a fine powder. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put some distilled water on this stuff. few hundred milliliters worth of distilled water. Whoops. Well, there goes another watch glass. Well, more fodder for the uh, the blooper reel. What do you get for trying to do two projects at once? Anyway, so we got a couple mil, a hundred milliliters of distilled water in there. I'm going to put some uh, muriatic acid in there. About the same amount. A couple hundred milliliters. And this should react with any uh, iron and any tin in there. And we'll put some heat to it, warm it up, and we'll get rid of those base metals before we go on to Aqua Regia to try and get the gold out of this stuff. So we'll let this cook for a while, and then uh, we'll decant off the, uh, the liquid and... Uh, We'll go to Aqua Regia. And I gotta clean up a bunch of broken glass on the floor here. All right, glass is cleaned up. Fortunately, I buy watch glasses in bulk because I'm always breaking them. Now, this has only been on the heat for a few minutes. It's not really even very hot yet. I don't know if that's showing up on the video very well, but the, the liquid has turned sort of a sickly yellow green color. So we're definitely dissolving some base metals out of this liquid. We got some bubbling going on. That's not boiling. That's hydrogen from the base metals reacting with the acid in there. So I'm going to let this continue to heat up and continue to cook. And uh, we'll see if we can get the bulk of those base metals out of there before we go on to Aqua Regia. We'll try and get as clean a gold out of this as we can. Okay, this stuff has warmed up to a low boil. I'm just going to let it boil like that probably for the rest of the afternoon, then turn it off and come out tomorrow and deal with it. I could probably be ready by then, I think. All right, so see you tomorrow. All right, it's the next morning. I'm going to decant off this now much greener liquid. Probably a lot of iron making that green. And I'm going to put this stuff back in the fume hood. And I'm going to give it another quick boil in hydrochloric acid. Just to try and get as much of the base metals out of this stuff as possible. My process for extracting gold from e-waste has basically been one of ex extracting everything that isn't gold and leaving the gold behind. So it's much easier to get and much cleaner when I... To get when I do get it. So this is going back in the fume hood for another quick boil. So I've been having a lot of trouble lately with leftover base metals, especially tin, in my stuff when I try to get the gold out. And tin is just a nightmare to deal with. And uh, yeah, I think I see some little flakes of metal in there still. So, so we're going to give it another boil. All right, so this has had a couple of boils in hydrochloric acid now, and the liquid has turned sickly yellow-green again. So I'm thinking that we're still getting metal out of it. Um, I am debating giving it a third boil. I don't know. Let me think about that while I decant this liquid off. What am I seeing in there? crystals of some kind. Huh. That's interesting. 
kind of crystals formed. Let me let me decant this off, and I'll give you a close-up look at them. I was not expecting that. Yeah, let me get my phone, and I'll give you a close-up look at whatever those crystals are in there. Well, that's interesting. I don't know what those uh, whitish clear crystals are there. Huh. Well, maybe I should give this another boil or two in uh, muriatic acid. Whatever they are, I don't really want in my aqua regia. And I guess the acid's extracted something if it's making crystals. So, all right. Maybe we'll do it one more time. I'm going to give it one more boil, but I think before I do, I'm going to rinse this stuff with some distilled water and see can dissolve whatever those crystals are and get them out of here so we don't carry it forward whatever it is I might have to put this on the heat to get those to dissolve because I can still see them in there even though the water is all turbid now I can still see the crystals in there you know seem to be dissolving so I'll put this on the heat warm it up and see if they dissolve Hopefully, they will, whatever they are. I haven't seen this before, and I've processed a lot of ceramic chips. Something in this batch, maybe. I don't know. Weird. All right. I gave this stuff a quick boil. Let's see what we've got here. We've got some more sort of greenish liquid. At least we're getting some more crud out of it. And good, I really don't see those crystals anymore. Whatever they were, they dissolved in the water. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this another rinse in distilled water. Let that settle a little bit. I'll pour it off. And then I think we'll be ready to go to Aqua Regia, or at least as ready as we're going to be. I'm not naive enough to believe I've got all of the base metals out of here. But uh, I think we've got a lot of the base metals out. We were going to have some really nasty Aqua Regia if I didn't give it those acid boils and these water rinses. But uh, it, it still may not be the best, but uh, it's going to be better than it was. So... I'll decant this off in a second. We'll get this back in the fume hood. And we'll hit it with some aqua regia. All right. I've given this stuff a couple more rinses to try and get as much of that, whatever that stuff that was growing crystals out of it, you know. So now it's time to hit this stuff with some aqua regia. Uh, put some muriatic acid in there. That's probably more than enough. Let me swirl this stuff around to get it all under the acid. Spread it out across the bottom thin again so that uh, everything has a chance to uh, contact the acid. All right, next we're going to put some nitric acid in. I've got my uh, brown acid bottle here with my homemade nitric acid in it. And I will put a link in the upper right to my nitric acid production video. It's part of my series on it's part of my series on forbidden chemistry. So nitric acid made entirely from scratch. So that's a little over two milliliters right there. And I'm gonna put about that much in again. I'm not expecting there to be a huge amount of gold in here, so we'll leave it at that for now. But yeah, check out that nitric acid production video. I think you'll find it interesting. 
give it another little swirl. I need bigger watch glasses for beakers this big. Let's turn some heat on it, warm it up, see if we get any kind of reaction going here. And uh, hopefully we'll get some gold in solution. That would be nice. So we'll just let it cook for a while and see what happens. Well, we got some bubbling going on in there. I'll take that as a good sign since this isn't anywhere near hot enough to be boiling yet. It's only been a few minutes. So I would say we've got some kind of metal going into solution in there in the aqua regia we made. Uh, hopefully gold. Hopefully gold. That would be nice. So we shall see. I'm just going to let it cook until I don't see any more activity. Then I'll probably put in a little more nitric acid just to make sure that we got everything into solution. But for now, I'm just going to let it cook. Well, alrighty. Looks like we've got gold in solution in there. Not that there was going to be much doubt. We saw all the gold on the on the pieces that went in. So, alrighty. Excellent. Now we just got to get the gold out of solution. All right, I might have forgot to push record. I denoxed this with my usual uh, saturated solution of sulfamic acid. And there was some extra nitric in there. I'd been a little heavy handed with it and the nitric acid is a little stronger than normal because it's homemade. So yeah, but I mixed up a good stiff batch of sulfamic acid and that, that took care of it. So we should be denoxed. Now we're gonna ice it. And that ice is going to cool and dilute this. And that will let stuff fall out of solution that needs to. And then we will filter it and drop the gold. So we'll just let that melt. And then uh, be back for filtration in a bit. All right, let's get this stuff filtered so that we can drop the gold out of it later. The ice is melted. It's nice and cool and dilute. So as per usual, I am going to try and get the liquid through before the filter is clogged. And then I will dump the solids in and rinse them with lots of distilled water to get the pregnant solution out of them. Looks like we're getting a nice clean filtrate coming through. That's good. It's even not all that green. Nice. There is nothing dirtier than gold that comes from IC chips. But I think we've done, I'm hoping anyway, that we've done a pretty good job of getting most of the base metals out of this. Maybe just a touch of green to it, but it's mostly yellow. I like that color. That's good. So I will finish filtering this and washing the pregnant solution out of the solids. And uh, I'll get that in a clean beaker and we'll drop the gold out of it with some SMB. So I'll be back when I'm done filtering. Well, I said we'd be back when we were ready to drop the gold. We're about done filtering. I've got the solids up here in the filter. And I've been rinsing them just to get the pregnant solution out of them. But look what's happening down here. Ah, we've got a scum of crystals forming on the surface again. Those did not come through the filter. They have formed since filtration. So, what do I want to do about that? I'm more and more convinced that those are lead chloride crystals. As this stuff gets more and more dilute, because I've been using rinse water to rinse the, uh, the pregnant solution out of the, the, the solids up in the filter. So this has gotten more dilute, so more crystals have come out of solution. And I see them laying on the bottom of the flask too. So I was just going to transfer this to a beaker and throw some SMB in it and uh, drop the gold and leave it to sit and settle overnight since it's getting late in the day. But I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put this in the fume hood and let it sit overnight 
And it's going to get quite cold tonight for Florida. You know, for Florida, it's going to get cold. Maybe in the mid to upper 50s. And I'll bet as this stuff cools down, we're going to get a lot more crystals forming. And what I think I'll do is tomorrow I will refilter it then and get rid of them before dropping the gold. I think that might be a very good idea. So just so we get as clean a gold as possible. I mean, certainly in uh, future steps, when I reprocess this gold, uh, this lead chloride might go back into solution in hot aqua region and just follow the gold through the whole process. So I don't want that. So I used sulfamic acid, which should have produced some sulfuric acid and dropped the lead out as lead sulfate. But apparently we didn't get rid of all of it, if that's lead chloride crystals like I think they are. So maybe I should have put some sulfuric acid in there too. Um, it's, I don't suppose it's too late. Tomorrow before I refilter it, I could put a squirt of sulfuric acid in there and uh, make sure we get any and all lead out that way. But yeah, I'm going to put this in a few hood and leave it until tomorrow and then deal with it. Then I will refilter it and then we will drop the gold. And hopefully we'll get a nice clean filtrate then and nice clean gold. So see you in the morning. Well, it's the next morning, and just as I suspected, as this stuff cooled down, it's like the mid, you know, 50s Fahrenheit out here. Look at all the crystals that formed. I was really having a hard time believing that all this is lead chloride that's made it this far through the process. But then I got to looking at a sample of lead chloride that I actually made quite a while back. I didn't think that it was long needle-like crystals, but I'm looking at these crystals. There are a lot of long needle-like crystals in there. So this actually could be lead chloride. But like I said, I'm having a hard time believing we got this much lead from the little bit of solder on the legs of those chips that might have come through. So I had another thought. Uh, those chips were really old, ceramic chips. I'm wondering if some of them were from military equipment, possibly. Um, maybe radiation hardened military equipment. Um, maybe we extracted some lead from the, uh, ceramic. I don't know. Possibly. But boy, I have never seen this much lead come through in a batch of chips, even old chips. So I don't know. Old rad hard chips is the only thing I can think of. And maybe pulling some uh, some lead out of the, the ceramic packages. I don't know. A, a bit of a loss to see where we could be getting so much lead in this process coming through. But we're going to try and eliminate it. I mean, uh, letting this stuff cool, if we got a lot to crystallize out. That's great. But I'm, so I'm going to put some concentrated sulfuric acid in here uh, just a little bit and uh, lead sulfate is really insoluble, so whatever lead is left in here ought to come out of solution. Um, I made this concentrated sulfuric acid, by the way, and I have a video on that as well. So I'll put a link to that in the upper right if you're at all interested in making your own concentrated sulfuric acid. So I got about two milliliters here. Put this in, see what happens. I don't know. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, okay. We are getting a precipitate. We are getting a precipitate. So I'll bet that is lead. Somehow, some way, we extracted just a crap ton of lead out of those IC chips. I'm going to put about another milliliter in just to be safe and swirl this around. And yeah, look at that. Look how milky that's gone. Yeah, I guess it was lead. Okay. Well, I'm going to let this sit here for a little bit, and I will get set up to filter it again. And um, I may gravity filter it with just a funnel with um, cotton stuffed in the base of the funnel. 
Because this, uh, this this lead sulfate, those big lead chloride crystals, yeah, those will filter out easy. But this this lead sulfate is a, is a fine fine precipitate, and uh, yeah, we're probably going to have to uh, gravity filter it with some uh, some cotton in the funnel to catch all that. Hopefully, we don't have to run it through two or three times to get it all out. Okay, let me get set up for that, and uh, we'll filter it again. Then we'll drop the gold. Yeah, this is a new one on me. Seeing this much lead coming through. I don't know. Maybe radiation hardened chips. Leave a comment. Let me know if you've experienced this. If you have any experience dealing with old military chips, radiation hardened, is there lead in them? Only thing I can think of is we must have leached a bunch of lead out of the uh, ceramic. I can't see that much just coming through from, you know. What the mighty mill knocked off the legs is lead solder. Okay, this is going to take a long time to filter. Because I stuffed cotton tight into the base of this funnel. And hopefully it's going to come through clean and I don't have to funnel it twice. But this is going to take a long time. It's okay, I've got a lot to do today. This can just sit here and filter in the background. While I work on my other projects. Oh, wow. Look at all the solids in the base of that flask. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely looks like lead chloride. And then that cloudy stuff looks like lead sulfate. But we're getting the lead out. All right, so we're just going to let that go. And we'll be back when we're finally, finally, finally ready to drop the gold out of this stuff and see how much gold we're getting. It's going to take freaking forever, but at least it's coming through nice and clean, so I don't think I'll have to filter it more than once. So, there is that. Okay, it's just a waiting game now. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully we've got the lead out, if that's really what it was, lead. Uh, this stuff's still pretty cold, as you can see by the condensation on the side of it here. So, uh, yeah, woods breezy today and this hasn't really had a chance to warm up but uh, we're going to throw some smb in it and see what happens see how much gold we get out of it whatever gold we get out of it it's going to go into my dirty gold um storage and it will get refined several more times just to make sure we get everything out of this stuff that shouldn't be in it and I'm not expecting you to get a whole lot of gold out of here because this is just a couple of dozen chips, remember? Now, they are old chips. They used more gold in the old days. Maybe we'll get lucky and there'll be a lot of gold here, but I'm not going to get my hopes up too, too high. There we go. Ooh, I forgot to turn the fume hood on. I just got a whiff of that sulfur dioxide. Wow. Not with it today. I can't believe I forgot to turn the fume hood on. Well, it went pale. I want to put another spoonful in. Let's see if we can get this to uh, start precipitating. Yeah. Ooh, one whiff was all it took to get me coughing. All right, we'll leave that. And we'll see what happens. I mean, we definitely got a color change, wet pail on us. Hopefully it will darken up and start dropping some gold here. Probably about the time I turn the camera off, that the way it always works. But uh, just let it sit, do it in its own time. Yep, there we go. I uh, turned the camera off, walked away for a minute, turned around, came back, and well, we're getting the gold drop. It's darkening up by the second, okay. 
a little bit of a delayed reaction. There's plenty of SMB in there, and I don't think there's a whole, whole lot of gold in there. So possibly whatever's contaminating this stuff is slowing down the reaction. I have seen that in the past where I've got some sort of other metal contaminants in them. I go, look, it's darkening up, yeah. Uh, I've got some other kind of metal contaminants in there, and it kind of causes a delayed reaction with the gold drop. So, yeah, this is definitely going to go in with my dirty gold, however much we get. Um, not expecting, like I say, a huge amount. I didn't do that many chips. It was more a demonstration of the process I used than um, mass production, all right? You know, I'd have had to do like 10 times that many chips to really expect to get a huge amount of gold. It's just a demonstration, but every little bit helps. So we'll see what we get. And we'll just let it uh, do its thing the rest of the day, maybe, and uh, come out and have a look, see how much gold we got on the bottom of the beaker when it's done. So this stuff has sat overnight, and, uh, well, we got a layer of gold on the bottom of the beaker, don't we? That is some pretty clear liquid. Um, you know, people are criticizing me for not doing enough uh, stannous chloride tests, but just, you know, with experience, with experience, I know when the liquid looks like this, there ain't any gold left in it, all right? Whatever gold was there is on the bottom of the beaker. Now, I will say that this took a long time to settle. So it's probably colloidal. It, there was probably still some contamination from other metals in there. Maybe still some lead, probably some iron, some copper, maybe some tin, which is the usual main agent provocateur when you're dealing with gold from e-waste. Tin and gold don't get along, so it's probably colloidal. Um, I'm going to try cleaning it up as it is and see what happens. But if it's not going to behave itself, we'll just redissolve it in a splash of aqua regia and re-precipitate it and see if we can clean it up that way. So I'm going to pull it out of here and we're going to siphon off this liquid and uh, then we'll start giving it some cleanup boils and see what happens. Alrighty, let me get this uh, liquid siphoned off of the gold in there. Be really careful because I don't want to suck up that super fine gold down there. I know it's super fine by how long it took to settle. So, the uh, siphon the vast majority of this spare and liquid off. And uh, we'll start cleaning up the gold. Normally, I would transfer this stuff to a smaller beaker. Because there's not that much gold in here, and it's a really big beaker. But there's a lot of fine gold stuck to the sides of the beaker. So I'm hoping that uh, if I leave it in this beaker and give it some boils, all that fine gold will wash down and uh, join its buddies on the bottom. So I think I will try that. I think we'll just try boiling it in this big beaker, at least initially. If it all uh, agglomerates together, maybe I'll transfer it over to a smaller beaker then for further cleaning. All right, you've seen me siphon before if you're a watcher of my videos, so no need for you to have to watch this whole thing. We'll be back when it's done. Okay, there's our gold down there. Not too bad considering the number of chips I ran. I don't know if it's showing up, but there's a film of gold all around the inside of the beaker, which tends to happen when the gold is colloidal. So I'll put this back in the fume hood, I'll put some uh, distilled water on it, and I'll start it boiling. And we'll see if everything cleans up, if the gold consolidates and conglomerates together. Um, if it stays if it stays colloidal in the, in the liquid, though, we'll have to uh, take more drastic measures to clean it up. But uh, let's see what happens with a, with a water boil. All right, there we are in the fume hood. I've got, you know, a couple hundred milliliters of distilled water on it. And I've turned the heat up on the hot plate. We'll bring this up to a boil. I like to boil it in water, distilled water, first, before going to any hydrochloric acid boils, just in case there's any lingering nitrate in there. Um, I don't want the gold, any of the gold going back into solution. So we'll, we'll boil it in distilled water first. 
And uh, if that works, if it's agglomerating nice, we'll decant off this first water and maybe give it a, you know, a boil in uh, hydrochloric acid and then a couple more distilled water boils to clean up the gold. So that's my plan. We'll see if it works. This stuff may not play nice. Let's see what happens. All right, well, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, the gold is actually seems to be behaving itself. Um, it's kind of agglomerated together in the middle of the beaker there. There's a little bit in the water column, but not a whole lot. I'm going to let it boil a little longer, see if it agglomerates anymore. And uh, then I'll probably decant off this liquid through a filter to catch all the little bits of, uh, of gold in the water. Save that for future processing. And then probably transfer the gold to a smaller beaker so that uh, I can give it further, further boils. Since it's behaving itself, I think we'll we'll do some uh, we'll do a hydrochloric acid boil and then some uh, more distilled water boil to clean it up. All right. So let me get set up to filter this stuff while it boils a little while longer. All right. I think the longer I let that boil, the clearer the water got. It's almost perfectly clear now, and we've got some. Uh, Really good looking gold down there on the bottom of the beaker. Yeah, it's falling down for the most part in the bottom of the beaker. It looks like more than I thought. Well, it always does when it's wet. We'll have to see what the scale tells. The scale is the lie detector, so we'll see how much gold there really is here. So, okay, I'm going to filter this because there is still a little gold in the water column. So I'm gonna run run this liquid through a filter here and capture all that. And I will probably put this first filter, and I'll probably put this first uh, water that comes off in my temporary stock pot too. And then uh, I will transfer the gold powder in the bottom of this beaker into a smaller beaker. And we'll go back into the fume hood for further treatments. All right. It's going to take a while to get it all through this little bitty filter. Be back when I've transferred the gold over and we're ready for further cleanup boils. Okay, we're back in the fume hood in a smaller beaker. Got some muriatic acid on there. We're going to boil it again. Then I'll drain that off. We'll give it some water boils. Dry it out and weigh it. Hopefully there's enough there to uh, get a good weight on I was just waiting for it to come up to a boil again. Well, I got up to a boil pretty quick. Uh, I'm going to let it boil for a couple more minutes and then take it off. And we'll uh, decant off this liquid and start giving it distilled water boils. I'm thinking at least three. Get the, uh, get the acid out of it. And then it'll dry it out and we'll weigh it. All right, here's the first post-acid boil, distilled water boil. So I'll decant this off, and we'll do another one. And then we'll do another one after that. And the second distilled water boil. All right, this is the third and I think last distilled water boil. After I decant off this liquid, we're going to start drying the gold out so we can get a weight on it. All right, here we are drying out the gold mud that good and dry and we'll be able to get a weight on it. And let me show you this over here. So here's the filter I use to filter the rinse water. So we got a little bit of gold in there. I mean, not a lot. Micrograms, maybe a milligram. I don't know. Enough to turn the paper a little blackish. So I'll just throw this in with my filter and rag storage and I'll get that gold back when I process them next time. Not going to waste for sure. All right, I guess it's time finally for a weigh-in. Uh, there's not a huge amount of gold here, but I wasn't really expecting there would be. There's some really fine stuff stuck in there. I'm going to have to clean this beaker out and keep the piece of paper towel I wipe it out with. That's one of my little tricks to make sure I don't lose any gold. I wipe out the inside of my beakers with a damp piece of paper towel. Get this stuck on gold off the sides. Then I throw that piece of paper towel in with my filters and rags. 
And I'll get that gold back when I process the filters and rags. So, yeah, there's some really fine stuff stuck in there, but I don't think it's enough to uh, show up on this scale. Let's see what we've got here. I really wish I had remembered to weigh those chips before I processed them and see how many were there. Huh. That's a little more than I was expecting to get. That's almost half a gram. I wasn't expecting to get this much from a few dozen chips. It just goes to show you, older is better when it comes to IC chips and uh, electronics in general if you're recovering gold. Um, they were more liberal with the gold way back when, when it was like, you know, $35, $40 an ounce. Now that it's over $2,000, they are really stingy with it. But hey, 0.44 of a gram, not too bad for the small amount of chips I processed. And Stan, I got I to gotta thank you again because a lot of those chips came from you. Not all of them, but a lot of them came from you. So thanks again for uh, sending those in. That, that, that's a fair amount of gold for that small amount of chips. And, uh, you know, I have several different ways to process ceramic chips. I have another video out there where I use my other gold, uh, where I use my other ore crusher. But, you know, it, it doesn't crush them up as fine, and it doesn't separate out the steel legs as well. So I think I like the Mighty Mill better. I think this process worked pretty well in spite of all the issues we had with lead. I think it worked out pretty well. So I'm happy. I hope you're happy. If you're happy, give this video a like. Give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to see my future videos. There'll be more gold recovery videos and videos on all kinds of stuff. Check out my two other channels, Electric Geek 64 and Mike's Lapidary and Fossils. There's always good stuff going on there, too. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.